So, knowing I was going to go last, I kind of predicted some of what was always going to be said, so that's all good. Um, I've just kind of, I've got four thoughts, I think, in terms of things I wanted to just mention um, in the context of kicking off the discussion um, at the end of the afternoon here. Um, so, first thought, really, is that, from my point of view, we're talking a lot about these kind of future mobility solutions as if they're almost one size fits all and somehow generic and there's like a blanket or a switch or something that we're going to just, you know, sort out one morning and, and wake up and it's, and we're magically just going to know what the answer is. I actually think that we're much more likely to see some of these things rolling out in a much more ad hoc way in terms of locally tailored different pieces and different solutions to, to fit different types of places, different types of routes and so on. And that's because actually the needs of a city centre network are very, very different to the needs of a rural town, are very different to the suburbs, very different to the motorways and the other interurban routes and so on. Now, that's, that's not to say that it makes it more difficult. I think it's actually to say that really instead of spending a lot of our time, and I'm guilty of this too, looking you know, way off into the future and trying to say what the answer is, actually we might be better off saying, well, look, we know what we want. We know we want a network that's safe and efficient and affordable and, and reliable and, and popular and fair and all these nice words and so on. But actually, what's the next step we need to take in, in a particular different set of contexts and just figure out how we start to do that a little bit better? And it just feels like if we might do that, we might go forward quite a lot faster. Um, I think I think also beyond that, I think there's, there's an awful lot of global practice that's going on in this space and best practice that's emerging all of the time. And to some extent, it's quite overwhelming. I think, in, in, maybe it's a UK thing, we're, we're slightly um, in a tricky position right now. We like, to, we like to be at the forefront of the ideas. That's fantastic. And, it, and we are at the forefront of a lot of the ideas and the R&D and so on that goes on. But where we're not necessarily always at the forefront is in our speed of just uh, of getting things on the ground and, and trying them out and so on. And I think we need to be really fast learners and really fast implementers of, of similar ideas and adapters, I guess, of ideas, as well as necessarily thinking that we need to always be the ones who have the ideas in themselves. I think there's no shame in borrowing and adapting and, and improving and, and you know implementing on the ground appropriate solutions in our, own, in our own certain ways. So I think we need a bit of a mix in that respect. And I think we might want to be looking at places like Norway in terms of electric vehicle take up. I think we might want to be looking at Australia in terms of the connected towns and connected cities initiatives that are going on there. I think we might want to be looking at Canada in terms of strategic thinking and integrated solutions and ideas in terms of how some of those um, particular um, cities are actually coming up with, with very, very forward thinking um, plans in terms of the different aspects of change they see and what they're actually going to do about it. We're going to see this new knowledge emerging all of the time. It potentially is really, really overwhelming. Um, and, and I guess in order to help with that, and this kind of leads me on to my third point, really, we need to know what it is we're actually looking for. So I think there is a much stronger role to play, and I take the points made a bit earlier on in terms of sort of controlling function or whatever that some places might wish to have in this. But I think we need to play a much stronger role in terms of leadership at both the local level, so up to the regional and national and so on. Lead leadership on the part of the public sector to think about actually what is it we really want? Because I don't think it's right that we should be in a situation where we've got all these sort of um, potential solutions coming towards us, and yet we don't know which ones to pick because we don't actually know what it is we've actually what we actually want. And I think there's an awful lot more we could do that. So whether you look at it from the point of view of electric or shared or connected or automated, all those different things, I think. I think there's a really big risk of two things happening if we don't get that bit right. Um, first of all, we're making choices based on solutions that kind of just present themselves. It's like they're solutions looking for a problem to fix, and there's a real risk of having square pegs in round holes when we behave like that. And I think, secondly, we have a really huge risk of solutions just happening to us rather than thinking about actually what kind of solutions do we want to craft and create and how do we become a part of that in terms of being able to explain what we actually want. Because you never know, you might then find the market coalesces around you in terms of trying to solve that problem with you instead of just saying, well, you know, we've heard from these four people, I guess we'll pick you. And, and it won't necessarily actually be the right answer at all. So I think there's a real risk there of missed opportunities if we don't get that leadership piece right. And I think, yes, it's hard but it's not impossible, and I think we do know what those next steps are, and I think we do know what the big long-run vision is, so it all kind of fits together quite well. And I think, um, I guess, finally, I think we need to remember why we're doing some of these things. Um, really, what our, what our transport networks do, whether you're looking at roads or railways or anything else, they, they are, to some extent, in their own right. Obviously, they are there, in some cases, as places in their own right. It's about making better places. In some cases, they're around connecting communities better and so on. This isn't about bringing through technology just for the sake of technology at all. And I think, um, I guess to put a slight analogy on that, you know, we don't build and maintain roads today because we happen to have the right kit and equipment around to do it. We build and maintain roads today because actually people want to connect. And it's all about the people and those communities and so on. And I think that's what we need to keep at the heart of all of our thinking in terms of how we go forwards as well. Because really nothing needs to change. Thank you.